words of the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches by way of giving an example. But oftentimes when you just read the translation of that example, it can be a little bit difficult to make sense of what is being said. So inshallah, I'm going to try to give you a little bit of background and set the stage to help all of us understand these two beautiful parables from Surah Al-Nur. Not only they are beautiful, but in my humble opinion, they are quite scary as well. And in that place in the Quran, two things have been contrasted, light and darkness. These two things have been contrasted. But I would like to share with you first what is the notion of light and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to as light in the Quran. So one of the first things that we learn in the Quran is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he calls himself light. So Allah says, Allah nurus samawati wal ars. Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth. In another place, you will find that this term light is actually used as a synonym, as an alternative for guidance. So guidance and light are both considered actually the same. So just, just like somebody is in darkness uh, is the same as saying somebody is misguided, the opposite is also true. Somebody in light or somebody has light, it's actually to say that somebody has guidance. And one thing that we need to understand here that this kind of guidance that is used as a term, as an alternative term uh, for guidance, this kind of light, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains it in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that this light exists inside the heart. This light exists where? Inside the heart. So keep these three things in mind. Keep these few things in mind. This is the first thing that I want to get out of the way. Now those two parables that I want to share with you, those two beautiful examples that I want to share with you from certain no, they are not about light actually. They are about dark. They are about darkness. They are about the two tragic cases of the people that either have no light or they don't take advantage of the light that they have. So inshallah, I will go through these examples one by one very, very quickly. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا أَعْمَالَهُمْ Those who have disbelieved, or you can also translate it, those who have buried away, meaning they have buried away their light. This is one of the ways that you can look at the word kufr. So those who have disbelieved, those who have been ungrateful, those who have denied, those who have buried their light away. What about them? Allah says, these people are like the one who is in the middle of the day in a desert. Kasarabim. And they see a serab. They see a mirage. So a man who is thirsty, a woman who is thirsty, lost in the desert, in the middle of the day. And they are trying really hard to find a place to survive. And of course, when you are in the sun, you start seeing waves where there are no waves. Things get a little watery. And that's what we call mirage. And since you are dying out of dehydration, you are dying out of thirst, you see that mirage and you think to yourself, maybe it's worth something. So Allah says, يَحْسَبُهُ الظَّمْآنُ مَاءَ This desperately thirsty one, he runs towards it. حَتَّى إِذَا جَاءَهُ Until he reaches the point where he reaches, until he reaches that point, لَمْ يَجِدْهُ شَيْئًا and he does not find anything there. It was just a false image. It was just sand. And then Allah says, وَوَجَدَ اللَّهَ عِنْدَهُ But he will find his Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there. He was looking for water. He was looking for water. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes a strange turn in the example. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, instead of finding water, he will find me there. فَوَفَّاهُ hisaba and then I will complete his account. I will give him whatever he deserves. Wallahu sari'ul hisab. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very quick in taking the audit, in taking the account of all the things that you and I did. So this is the first example. I haven't explained it to you yet. I just wanted to know about this example in brief translation. Now second example very quickly. Aw ka ghulumatin fi bahar. Now this second example is going to be almost the opposite scene. First time we were in the desert, now we are going to be in the ocean. 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Aw kazulumatin. It's like layers on top of layers on top of layers of darkness at sea. Now we are not talking about daytime anymore. We are talking about nighttime. In the first example, it was very clear that we were talking about daytime because you don't see mirage in the nighttime. You only see it in the day. But now you are out at sea at nighttime. Fi bahrin, kazulumatin fi bahrin. And you are covered by layers of darkness. Lujji yi. Lujji in Arabic language means an ocean that is not merciful. It won't let up. Meaning that the waves are getting violent and you are hoping that this was just one wave and things are going to become better now. Things are going to calm down now. But no. Waves are getting worse and worse and worse. Allah says, Yagshahu mawjun. Until a wave comes and it overtakes him. A wave so huge in the middle of the sea, it comes and it crushes whatever vessel he is in, whatever boat he is in, whatever ship he is in, and it's underwater now. Mawjum min fawqihi. And then on top of that wave, that has already slammed him down deep into the water, there is another wave drowning him deeper. Mawjum min fawqihi sahab. And then on top of that, there are thunderstorm clouds. And when the clouds are there, it's an indication that the storm is coming. You know, the people who are experienced at being out at sea, they can just see the clouds and they can tell that they have to get ready because things are going to get ugly. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying the waves are relentless. The storm is not letting up either. And this poor soul, whoever that person is, this poor soul, he's into the depths of the ocean. He's in the middle of the darkness. And at the end of this parable, what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says? إِذَا أَخْرَجَ يَدَهُ لَمْ يَكَدْ يَرَاهَ He's all the way at the bottom of the sea. He cannot even try to get up because every time he tries to get up, another wave comes and it slams him down. So that's the problem. He cannot even swim his way off because there's always wave on top of another wave on top of another wave. So he's lost in the depth of the darkness. And Allah says when he's lost in the depth of the darkness, he takes his hand out. And he could almost see his hand. He takes his hand out and he could almost see his hand. And then finally Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala concludes this example by saying, Whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not give light to, how could they have found light for themselves? Whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not furnish any light, did not facilitate any light, how could they have gotten light for themselves? So these are the two examples that are mentioned in Surah An-Nur. And like I said in the beginning, it can be confusing. That what, what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mean by that? But that's why I wanted to paint, paint a little bit of picture, give you a little bit of background to help you understand these two parables in brief English translation. Now let us try to dig a little bit deeper. Let us try to appreciate what is being said in these two examples. In both of these cases, people are not seeing what they are supposed to see. So the first person is in the middle of the desert and it's bright outside. Still he sees something that is not there, right? He sees a mirage, doesn't he? He sees a mirage which is not there. So it is as good as being blind. You might as well be in the darkness. Because it's not there, what you see is not there. So it's a form of blindness, even though you are out in the daytime and there is brightness around you, but still you are blind because you see something that is not there. In the second example, a person is out at the sea, it's nighttime, there is no light, there is not even moonlight because it's covered by clouds and there are waves on top of waves and you are into the depth of the sea, so you are blind in another way. So both these are sides of blindness. But why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell us two different sides of blindness? If they both are two different sides of blindness, why not just Allah tell us one side of blindness? Why is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us here two different sides of blindness? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is actually describing that on the day of judgment, when people come, the unfortunate cases are going to be of two kinds. And now I need your attention. I would like to have your attention to understand and appreciate what is being said in these two parables in these two examples. There are people who are in light. There are people like that person who is in the middle of the desert in the daytime and they are surrounded by light. 
You cannot get brighter than the desert in the daytime, right? You cannot get brighter than that. So there are people who are in light, they are in good environment. They act religiously, they look religious, they talk religious, their family is religious, their community is religious, they are involved in the masjid, they are involved in different religious causes. They are not drinking alcohol, they are not at the club, they are not in the party scene, they are not in that scene. They are in a religious setting, they are in a spiritual setting. They are surrounded by light. And a lot of time we assume that people like that, they are one-way ticket to Jannah. Because they have got it good. They have made it. They don't have any issues. Alhamdulillah, they don't have any issues. One-way ticket to Jannah. But unfortunately, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us that sometimes, even when you are surrounded by that much light, you start becoming delusional. And you start thinking that appearance of looking religious saying some words that make you sound religious, the outside of you being committed to the faith, you, you may look like pretty enlightened, but it doesn't say anything about what is going on on the inside. This is a problem that we have in our community that Allah is highlighting here. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comment, commented on that exhaustively in the Quran, but I will inshallah... Uh, I will oversimplify it because time is of the essence here. I will oversimplify it. In our ummah, in our community, sometimes you have people that look very religious, that look very spiritual. They look very enlightened. They look very committed to the faith. And they commit to all of those things that, may look, they, that make them look like that way. So appearance becomes really important. You know, clothing becomes really important. Pronunciation of certain utterances becomes very important. All of these things that people can see, people can perceive, becomes very important. But there is something else going on on the inside, like greed, like hatred, like jealousy. You cannot see anybody else succeed. It bothers you. You don't feel even a little bit of sympathy when you are ruthless to your kids at home. You do not consider the people whose rights you are taking away. Why? Because it's all personal. It's all on the inside. Nobody is going to find out. So I don't see them because it's not in front of the people. So it doesn't matter. What's in front of the people should look pristine. But inside is ugly. It's dark. So Allah says these people assume that they are in light and yes, they are in light. They are doing good deeds. They are volunteering at the masjid. They may even go out, they, they may even grew out a beard. They put on hijab. They memorize some of the Quran. They perfect their tajweed. So the outside stuff is amazing. Outside stuff is amazing. So because of that, they start assuming that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to really reward me for all of this. I'm doing pretty good as opposed to that person who cannot even say Surah Al-Fatiha properly. I'm doing pretty good as opposed to that person who cannot even do X, Y, Z. You know, who cannot even come to the masjid for the prayer. I'm doing pretty good because I am in light. I'm surrounded by light and I'm doing good deeds. And this sense of superiority is the worst sin out of all the sins that are mentioned in the Quran and the Sunnah. You start thinking and you start comparing yourself and you start thinking that I stand in a better place than another human being. And I'm being very careful with my language here. I stand in a better place, not only than a Muslim, but a human being. I stand in a better place. And this pride is actually the replica of the pride of shaitan, of Iblis. Of Iblis. What did he say? I'm better than Adam. Allah tells us in the Quran, Allah says, you know this heaven that I've made? You know this beautiful home that I've made? Allah says, I've only made for the people who do not want to feel superior in this world, who do not desire for uluf, who do not want to make them feel or give other people an impression that somebody is lesser as compared to me. Somebody is little as compared to me. Allah says, I've made Jannah only for these people, only for these people. And subhanAllah, sometimes, unfortunately, there are some people among us, and wallahi brother, I tell you, 
This is a reminder for myself first, because I know I'm guilty of that. I know I'm guilty of that. There are some people among us, maybe it's you, maybe it's me, that because of our religious knowledge, because of our religious position, because of the, our, because of the religious perception of other people about us, we do start thinking that we are better than somebody else. We do become condescending towards other people. So these are the people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described in the first example, like Ibn Ashur rahmatullah alayhi. He mentioned in his book, in his tafsir book, he said these people are like that person who is in the middle of the desert. They are surrounded by light. It's bright outside. And they're doing really good deeds. They're doing really good deeds. So they are like that person who is in the middle of the desert and he's working really, really hard. But they are only working hard on the outside stuff. And they're working so hard that now they're going to die out of dehydration. And they see a mirage. And they see a sirab. And when they finally get there, what they think of water, thinking that inshallah, I'm going to go into heaven because of all of my good deeds. I'm going to, I'm going to go into heaven and be replenished for all the deeds that I did. All they find there is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling them, may Allah protect all of us. Telling them that every single thing that you did, you did only on the outside. But there was no light on the inside. There was only darkness in the inside. فَوَفَّاهُ hisaba, So you don't get anything today. You don't get anything today. Wallahu sari'ul hisab. You know, my brothers, the unfortunate thing, people who are away from the deen of Allah and they don't practice Islam and they face something like that on the day of judgment. Where people who are practicing Muslims come to the masjid, dedicate their life towards the cause of Islam, worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they face this scenario on the day of judgment. May Allah protect all of us. Wallahu sari'ul hisab. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very quick in taking the audit, in taking account of every single thing that you and I did in this dunya. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, we have to become people of introspection. Whether or not people praise me and you means nothing. As a matter of fact, whether or not people criticize you and me means nothing. I have to be able to ask myself that if Allah were to ask me right now what you are doing is right or wrong, am I able to answer Allah? Am I able to do right by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Because he is the only one at the end of the day. He is the only one that I'm going to be meeting at the end of this journey. So only he matters. This is the first example. The second example is actually a completely different scenario. The first one is the people who think that they are doing good and they finally get there and they find nothing. But the second one is a completely different scenario. It's a scenario of somebody who is in the dark, who is completely lost in dark. And he is pushed even more into darkness and more into darkness and more into darkness and he's keep going deeper and deeper and deeper. This is somebody who's not in a good environment. This is somebody who's not involved in religious cause. They are not even around people who have strong faith. As a matter of fact, all of the friends that they have, they make them even worse human. They instill in them worst kind of habits. And they put themselves in environments, they put themselves in situations that are, that are pure black, that are pure evil, but they are addictive. So if they keep going back to those environments, they keep going back to those friends, they keep going back to that stuff, and they form all kinds of different addictions, addictions to certain kind of behaviors, addiction to certain kind of music, addiction to certain kind of movies, addiction to certain kind of filthy language, addiction to certain kind of shamelessness. Addiction to substances, all of these different kinds of addiction, and then they can't let go of that entire scene. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the waves are coming and they are slamming you down and you are drowning deep into the ocean in the middle of the darkness, at the bottom of the sea. But you know the most powerful thing here? At the end of this parable, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives hope to these people. Subhanallah. Allah did not give hope to the people mentioned in the first example, remember? Allah gives hope to these people. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't say that when you are at the bottom of the sea, you could not even see your hand because you are covered by darkness and you could not even see your hand. Allah didn't say that. Allah said, Lam You could almost see your hand. You could almost see your hand. Your hand is the representation of what you and I do. Even in the depths of darkness, you could almost see your hands, meaning even in the depth of darkness, you still have some sense that this is wrong. What I'm doing is wrong. I should know better. 
I shouldn't be doing this. I should know that I need to change myself. I'm humiliated by what I'm doing. I'm giving in to this, this something inside of me that's so animal, that overtakes me, that I lose my connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And every single time I dive into this darkness, my connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it gets hurt even more and more and more. And every time it's, it gets hurt, there is less and less and less light. But there is still some light left inside of you that let you see that. That let you see that. It's being dimmed away. It's being weakened. It's being covered by all kind of darkness. But it's still enough for you and me to somewhat see that what we are doing is wrong. There is still some hope. Allah does not let that hope die. Allah doesn't let that light die. My brothers, if you think about it, back in the day when that ayah was revealed, when Sahaba was reading that ayah, when Sahaba were reading that ayah, what was light at night time? How do people have night, light at night time? They either had lamps or candles, right? Once you take that candle, once you take that lamp under water, what is going to happen? Immediately it's going to blow out. There's no source of light left, right? But subhanAllah, somehow this source of light, even in the depths of the sea, it's still protected. Even though it's in such a dark and bad environment, it's still protected. It's been weakened, but it's not been suffocated. It did not blow out. It did not get washed away. And this is the light that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected inside of you and inside of me. No matter how far gone you think you are, how far gone think I am. See, sins happen. Mistakes happen. Crimes against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala happen. Our hearts go into really dark places, into really dark directions. Our hands go into dark directions. We make mistakes. But look at the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He concludes this ayah by saying, For somebody who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not have provided light for, where could they have gotten light for themselves? How could you have gotten light for yourself if Allah did not provide it? Allah is asking you and me, can you imagine in the depth of the sea, in the middle of the darkness, where this light is coming from? Can you imagine? Where would this light come from? Where do you think this light come from? If it's not from Allah, Allah is bringing that light to you. Allah is protecting that light for you. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling me that we give up on him, he doesn't give up on us. We let him go, he doesn't let us go. He keeps that hope alive. He keeps that, that light alive. He let us have the ability to at least feel bad. And you know, we drown out that voice. We hear it, but we say to ourselves, no, 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 I'm not going to hear it. I'm already in the line to get into that club. I'm, I'm only the third person left before entry. And now my conscience is kicking in. Now my conscience, my light is telling me, you, should be turn, you, you, you shouldn't be doing this. You should turn around and go. You know, this voice inside of you, that's the light, a tiny bit of light left inside of you that Allah is protecting. Allah is protecting. And you can suffocate it at that time. And then next time too, and then next time too. But Allah's promise, I will keep that light alive. But let me make myself very clear here. There is a limit to that. Allah will keep it alive, but there is a limit to that. Because Allah tells us in the Quran, there are people, فَهِيَكَ hijara, Their hearts become stone. So even if Allah keep your light alive, and your, but your heart is stone, that light cannot get out now. So that light is dead. For all practical reasons, that light is dead. And you will know that that has happened to you when you no longer feel bad, when you no longer feel guilty. You know, instead of feeling guilty, instead of feeling bad, you justify your sins. You know, you glorify your sins. And you say to yourself, what do you mean it's haram? What do you think we can't do that? This is the reason why we are alive. This is the reason why we are enjoying our lives. When that happened, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, then this is beyond hope. Now this is beyond help. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never, ever, ever let us fall into that category. Say ameen out loud. Ameen. Because at the end of the day, the most precious gift that Allah has given you and Allah has given me is that light that Allah himself is protecting. Allah himself is protecting. So my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, preserve that light. 
preserve that light. And I will lead you, I will leave you with this verse. Allah tells us in the Quran, فَآمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَالنُورِ الَّذِي أَنزَلْنَا Believe in Allah, believe in the Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the light which we have sent down. And the light that which we have sent down. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls the Quran light. Allah calls the Quran light. And subhanallah, it's not by accident that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls the Quran light. Because my engagement with the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's Allah talking to me. It's not just some book. It's not just something that I recite. It's Allah talking to me. And when Allah talks to me, the light only gets stronger and stronger and stronger. Because this Quran itself is light. The words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala themselves are light. So my faith will be restored. My vision of what is right and what is wrong will be restored if I keep going back to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But me going back to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cannot be artificial. It cannot be artificial. It cannot be that I just pick up the Quran, read some verses from it, and then I put it down. It cannot be that I just read the translation of some of the verses so that I can argue with my friend about the meaning of this verse and about the meaning of that verse. It cannot be like that. It has to be that, Ya Allah, I need light for myself. So please help me find light in your words. This is a humble, begging attitude that you need to have and I need to have when we come to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Unfortunately today, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, please forgive me for saying that. But unfortunately today, even the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is supposed to make us humble, we approach this book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a tool to win arguments. We approach this book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to just read it with, with beautiful recitation, just as a casual pastime. And I'm not saying it's bad. I'm not saying that you perfecting your tajweed is bad. I'm not undermining the importance of that. But we don't think of it as our lifeline. We don't think of it that this is Allah talking to me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala giving me value while addressing me. Allah says in the Quran, Risalati Rabbihim. These are my letters to you. These are the letters from your master. Subhanallah, do you know when somebody writes you a personal note, not just a text message on WhatsApp or on your mobile phone, somebody writes you a personal note, you feel amazing that this person took the time out to write me a personal note. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to you and me in the Quran. So I sincerely make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala connect our hearts deeply with his book and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala maintain that source of light. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen that light that we have inside of our, ourself no matter how weakened it has become. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us united in this dunya and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reunite us in the hereafter. Wa akhru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.